Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I like to continue the discussion on filter design. For this video, I'm going to discuss how can we actually design and also implement a low pass filter on micro strip line. Okay, in fact, this topic is basically a request from you guys. So the request is actually specific. Ask me how to design a filter onto a PCB board. So this video will help to achieve this objective. How can we actually implement a low pass filter on micro strip line? So this will be step by step. I'm going to show it to you. How can we actually design a low pass filter? Firstly, on a lump element. After that, convert them into micro strip line. This will be the part 17 series discussion on filter design. The rest of the filter design discussion, I have put the video link under the description. So please take a look on those videos if you're keen to know more about filter design. There are also another two videos which I have put under the description. So this two video, okay, which is Richard's transformation and Karuda identity. Okay, so these two are actually also discussed briefly in this video. So if you need to know more detail on this Richard's transformation and Karuda identity, please take a look on those videos because these two techniques are actually required to transform the lump element into my first line. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, please continue to give me feedback through comments so that the quality of this channel can be further improved. Once again, appreciate and sincere thanks for your strong support. Let's start okay, by just giving the problem statement. So for example, for this example, how can we actually design a low pass filter using micro strip line with specification as following? Okay, firstly, I'm given a third order filter. I'm also given a cutoff frequency at four gigahertz. And I actually also given as a chapel 3 dB equal ripper characteristics. So these are all the specification that is given for me to implement this low pass filter on a micro strip line. So how can I start? Okay, so since the filter order is given to me, which is three, so I can draw this lump element. Okay, so you can see from here, this one element, two element, three, because I'm given third order. And inductor need to be in series, while capacitor need to be shunned because this is a low pass filter. Okay, again, if you are not sure why, uh, I will put another video into the description so as to explain why a series L and Shan C make up a low pass filter. So this is the first task. I draw the lump element okay, with three elements as you can see from here because I'm given a third order. So basically I have draw three elements over here which denote G1, G2 and G3. Okay, so next task is basically I'm ready to so-called find the numbers for this G1 and G2 and G3. Okay, next, from the table, okay, so this is a Chebyshev 3 dB ripple table. Okay, so basically from the table, I know that G1 is equal to 3.3487. Okay, G2 is equal to 0 0.7117. While G3 is also having the same number, which is 3.3487. Okay, while the last will be the load, okay, so which is 1. Okay, so over here, the last part typically belongs to the load. Okay, so from this table, okay, maybe just want to do a quick, discussion, you can see that N is equal to 1, okay, it will be a symmetric low pass filter. But once the N is equal to 2, it will not be symmetric. So typically for this design, okay, we actually prefer the N to be a uh, odd, okay, because we know that it will be symmetric okay, because on the last term is actually as a 1. Okay, so therefore, we will prefer to design all in an odd order for these methods. Okay, so let's quickly continue on the discussion. So once I find all the G1, G2, and G3 value, 
Okay, I can start to write the value onto the lump element that I shared with you earlier on. So instead of G1, G2, G3, I put down all the values here. So as I told you uh, earlier on, okay, so this G4 is the load you can imagine having a number of one. So I done all this value. So basically this is what I have done earlier on, which is the G1 value, the G2 value, the G3 value, and the one over here, which is under the load and also onto the source. So I'm ready to do this question now. So I have all the lump element component and I need to convert them into microstrip line. So next, before we touch on, on the microstrip line, okay, we need to use this Richard transformation. Okay, so as I shared with you earlier on, on the Richard's video, uh, so-called uh, discussion, okay, the main key thing why we have this Richard transformation is basically they are used to convert lump element like L and C into series and shunt stuff. Okay, so over here you can see that in short, I don't want to say more. So if you keen, look at the video that explained on the Richard transformation. So if it's an inductor, okay, it will be represented by a short circuit. Okay, one thing I will highlight that you can see that the impedance is exactly the same. Okay, the, the length of the transmission line will be lambda over A. If it's a capacitor, okay, you can see over here, okay, they have a reverse relationship in terms of the characteristics impedance. Okay, the wavelength will be the same as lambda over eight, but for capacitor, okay, it will be represented by an open circuit. Okay, remember this: inductor, short circuit; capacitor, open circuit. Okay, so let's further okay, discuss on the previous example. Okay, so these are all the lump element which I have done earlier on. So now my job is basically to convert them into series stuff or shunt stuff, as mentioned by the Richard transformation. So remember, this is a inductor. So actually, it's represented by a series, so-called short circuit over here. Same as on the other side for the G3. So basically, it's a series short circuit here. Okay, so this is a capacitor. So I know that it will be represented by an open circuit. Okay, so it will be represented by an open circuit. Okay, but one thing you can look over here, Okay, you can see that the value change. You can see over here the value change. Why? Okay, if you still recall, I told you that I'm going to do a one divide. Okay, one divide by Z naught is equal to this Z naught. So you basically you can see that they have a so-called uh, reverse uh, characteristics. So over here, therefore, I need to do a one divide by 0 0.7117 in order to get this 1.405. So over here, you can see that the relationship is still the same. Okay, as you can see from Richard transformation, Z0 equal to Z0. But for capacitor, it's 1 over Z0 equals to Z0. So therefore, for capacitor, I need to do a 1 divide. So therefore, I get this 1.405. While this is a series L, so basically the value remain intact. Same over here. So it's a series L, the value here remain intact. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, so we need to add unit element, okay, because the series stuff, okay, all these series stuff, they will be very difficult to implement in microstrip line. Okay, so in order to implement a series connection onto a microstrip line, it's too challenging, and therefore we want them to convert into a so-called shunt stuff. So how can we actually do this? Is basically we need to use this method, which is called the Karuda identity. So this Karuda identity, okay, the key purpose is to convert this series stuff into a shunt stuff. Okay, so how can we do this? Is basically we will add the redundant element. Okay, so we will add this redundant element, which is called a unique element here. So basically, these are we call the redundant element. So this unique element or redundant element, they do not affect the filter performance in terms of frequency response. Okay, since they are matched to the source and load. Okay, so basically you can see that they are all matched into one. So they do not have any effect on the filter characteristics here. So what probably the effect will be the delay. Okay, the delay will be longer, but they don't affect the frequency response at all because they have the impedance exactly the same as the load and also same as the source. So basically they will not do any alternation Okay, on the frequency response. Like what I mentioned earlier on, probably if there is some effect, it's only on the delay. 
but nothing on the frequency response of this filter. So we add in this unique element so that we can convert the series stub into shunt stub. So how can we actually do this? Okay, we will actually implement this Karuda identity. Okay, so we will implement this Karuda identity. So basically, you can concentrate over here. So over here, you can see that it's an inductor because it's a short circuit. So I know that it will be an inductor. So this is the unique element that I add in here. So this is the Karuda identity number two. Okay, so this is the unique element which is shown here over here. So over here, I will be able to transform them. Okay, you can see from here, you, you will know that this is actually called a shunt stop. So basically, if I able to transform them, I actually become this form here. So how can we actually do this? This equation is also given by Karuda identity. Okay, so let's take a close look. How can we actually transform them into the Karuda identity? Okay, so as I told you earlier on, okay, so this is the two point that you can correlate to the ident Karuda identity number two. Okay, so the L and also the unique element. So how can we actually convert? Okay, so from here, the Z1, I know that Z1 is equals to 3.3487 and Z2 is equals to 1. Okay, as you can see quite clearly over here, so this emanates like a inductor okay, with a short circuit. So therefore, I know that this Z1 is equals to 3.3487. While Z2 is a unique element, so therefore, I know that it's equals to 1. So I'm ready to calculate the rest of this value so that I can implement them from series stop to shun stop. Okay, so let's continue. Okay, so these are all the equations. So basically, the first thing I am given this from the Karuda identity. So I know that Z2 is equal to 1. Okay, Z1 is equal to 3.3487. So from here, I can calculate N squared is equal to 1.299. Okay, I need to calculate these two things. Okay, I need to calculate N2Z1, okay, which is shown over here. I also need to calculate 1 over N2Z2, which is shown over here. So I can easily calculate this N2Z1. Okay, so N2 is 1.299. Okay, maybe N squared, okay, 1.299. So Z1 is equal to 3.3487. So I calculate is 4350. Okay, so this is N2Z1. Okay, so I have calculate, which is 4.350, which I denote over the figure here. Next. 1 over N2, Z2, so it's 1 divided by N2 is 1.299, multiplied by Z2, which is equal to 1. So if you calculate, it should be 0 0.767. Okay, so over here, I have done the calculation. Okay, so this is basically equal to 0 0.767. Okay, so next, okay, I'm ready to convert them back into microstrip line. Okay, remember, this is now converted to a shunt stop, correct? And with a capacitor, I know it's an open circuit. Okay, remember for capacitor again, okay, so instead of 0 0.767, I need to do a one divide. So one divide by 0 0.767, I actually get this 1299. So can you see over here, this is the basically the Karuda identity conversion. So I have converted them into 4.350. And I also convert them. So this is basically 1 over 0 0.767. I actually got this 1.299. So over here, you can see that I actually successfully transformed the lump element into a distribute element or transmission line. Basically, you can see that all of them actually become a shunt stop with an open circuit on this microstrip line design. So next. Okay, I need to do a denormalize because you can see that all the source and the load, they are actually all equals to 1. So what I need to do is everything all multiply by 50. So in short, okay, I, I, I will do this first. Okay, 1.299 multiply by 50. 4.350 multiply by 50. Same over here. This will be 1.405 multiply by 50. Same over here, 1.299 multiply by 50. So I will have all this value. And with all this, you can actually easily implement them into a microstrip line as shown over here. So that will be the end of my this video discussion. Basically, this video discuss how can we actually design a low-pass filter 
onto a micro strip line. Firstly, I show you how can we actually design this low pass filter on a lump element or the LC. Okay, so I, I actually use the LC element to design a low pass filter. But because the task is basically to design into a micro strip line, so I actually make use of two elements. Okay, one is basically the Richard transformation, another one is the Karuda identity. So basically, these two so-called techniques actually enable us to convert the lump element into distribute element or transmission line. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. See you.